Stacey Zinn Roberts, and I'm the host of Live Your Passion. My guest today is Betsy Otter Thompson. She joins us from her office, and we had a little bit of a technical glitch, so if you see the headphones, it's just so that we can hear each other. But uh, I know that you're going to be able to hear us, and that's not a problem. So please bear with us with the little weird doohickeys. It's okay with you, Betsy, right? Yes, it's fine. <laughs> okay. We still look good. It's, it's better than trying to read your lips. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Okay. So, Betsy, I want to introduce you to our to our audience. Um, Betsy Otter Thompson is an author, and she is a Philadelphia native, as I am. She has a BFA from the University of Pennsylvania, and Betsy worked as an account executive for several Philadelphia radio stations and as a commercial print model, appearing in television commercials in Philadelphia and New York. After moving to California, Betsy struggled and nearly became homeless. After she recognized her tendency to blame everyone else for her problems and she decided to become accountable, she began to recover. For the next 18 years, Betsy worked as an executive assistant to an entertainment executive in the film industry. She retired in 2005 and is now writing full time. Betsy has a passion for communicating spiritual concepts. Her lessons have been about understanding how she faces herself wherever she goes. Betsy finally realized that each job and each person was an opportunity to know herself better. Isn't that interesting? It's not an opportunity to blame others for her problems. So in addition to the book that we're going to talk about today, which is What Happens If book, Betsy's also written several other books. Um, she is the author of Walking Through Illusion, the Mirror Theory, Love Parent, Love Human, and You Are What You Think. Welcome, Betsy Otter Thompson. I'm delighted to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I'm pleased to have you. And you know, this is a really interesting book. I, I read it, and um, some of these concepts are, 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 are really spiritual, and, but they are so common sense. So um, I want to make sure that we talk about some specifics in the book, but first... In, in your bio, you say that you once blamed everyone but you for your problems. What, what happened to change your way of thinking? Well, I guess the main motivation was that I almost became homeless. Uh, so that's where blaming took me. Um, and I decided that the philosophy that I had had was not working very well for me, and I needed a new one. I, I, at, that, at that time, I started doing the Course in Miracles. Mm. And for me, that was all about taking responsibility. So I started taking responsibility for the fact that I had made the choices that had gotten me almost homeless. Nobody else had. And uh, that was what turned my life around. Because one of the things I took responsibility for was my ability to communicate with spirit, which I knew I could do when I was five years old. But my sister reacted so violently to it that I gave it up because I thought to myself, well, if that's how she reacts, how will everyone else react? And so I decided that I would accept this gift and I would write down the messages I heard, but I sure needed a job to support me while I did it. And three weeks later, I had a job at Castle Rock Entertainment. The second day they were in business. And I stayed with the, man, the CEO for the next 18 years until I was made enough money I could retire and write full time. Now, you said something that I want you to clarify. What do you mean that you could communicate with spirit? What do you mean well, by that? Well, when I was five, my, my mother was always talking about her grandmother, my great-grandmother, who had died a few days before I was born. And she was very close to this woman. She kept telling me how much I looked like her, and, and even at five, I was having trouble getting along with my mother, so I thought the fact that I looked like somebody she loved was a definite asset, and um, so I started talking to her at night. It seemed perfectly natural to me. I, I thought everybody could do it, so that's why I told my sister and said, you know, who do you talk to? Did so that, that's how it began. Did she talk back? Yes, we had lovely conversations. 
Yeah, lovely. It was wonderful. I was enjoying it very much. I I wanted to know who my sister talked to, who everybody else talked to. <laughs> you know, natural curiosity of a child, you know. And do you still so. do you still have conversations with people in spirit? Yes, yes. That's what my writing is, really. Um, communicating with spirit and really being a channel, being an open channel that spirit can speak through me. Where do you think this comes from? I just think it's a gift, like everybody has a gift, and uh, that's what I have, and I suppose, I mean, I don't know why, but I think we choose our gifts before we get here. Okay, so elaborate on that. What do you mean we choose our gifts before we get here? Well, I think we choose everything. I mean, I, when you go on a vacation, you choose how long you're going to stay there, what you're going to take with you when you go there. Uh, how long you're going to be there, who you're going to go with. Why would we be any less careless planning this journey? And you believe we've been here more than one time then? Yes, I do. Yeah. Where, where does all this information come from for you? Well, I can't say exactly. I just know that I open my heart for spirit to speak through me, and that's how it happens. And that's how this book started. I had a horrible day at work one day. Somebody had been very patronizing to me. And I, I knew about action reaction. Whatever you give to others comes back to you. But I was having trouble being honest about what I must have given to explain what I had received. So I was had to ask myself, where have you been patronizing to somebody else? And I realized as soon as I asked myself the question, I realized where I had been. So then I corrected that situation, and the person who was patronizing at work, they continued to be patronizing. After I stopped being patronizing, it didn't bother me anymore. Oh, that's interesting. Why not? Because uh, this is what I believe. We all have an aura around us, and, and within, that, within that aura are all the ideas that we have put out towards other people. And so if an idea comes back to us, that is not compatible with our aura, it just bounces off our aura. We hear it, we notice it, but it doesn't bother us. Interesting. Okay. So um, this is one of, of several books. Are there nine books that you've written already now? Is it nine? Six books. Six. 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 That's a lot. Yeah. And um, there's something that you wrote in this book, and, I, and, and it really jumped out at me. And I want to read you the sentence that really jumped out at me. You wrote in the What Happens If book. It's good stuff. What you wrote was, if you define achievement as the growth of your inner essence, you value whatever helps you to embrace it. I'll say that again. If you define achievement as the growth of your inner essence, you value, value whatever helps you to embrace it. So what that said to me is, um, everything that happens to you is a way to learn from something, even if what happens might be considered a negative event. Right. So could yeah. you kind of expand on that? Well, I mean, if it's a negative event, it's telling you something about yourself, something you need to learn about yourself, if you, if you feel negative about it. I mean, things happen every day out in the world. Some people see it as negative, some people see it as positive. So your interpretation is what matters. How you feel about that issue has something to teach you about yourself. Okay. Okay. And then there was another section that relates to that. You said, you know, as you know, this show is called Live Your Passion. And one of the things in your book, you talk about living your passion. And there was a sentence, two sentences. Money isn't the reward for doing what you love. Happiness is. Yeah. Talk yeah. to me about yeah. that. <laughs> well, I think there's a lot of confusion around that idea. A couple of years ago, I guess it's at least 10 years ago, somebody came up with that phrase, do what you love and the money will come. But that's very misleading, I think. Now, if you have a passion and it doesn't earn you money, then go out and earn money another way so that you can continue with your passion. <laughs> 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 I mean, that's certainly what happened to me when I first started writing, I didn't make any money from the writing at all. But the job I had in the entertainment business, the money was pouring in. And so I had to say, hey, you know, wait a minute, you know, 
I'm dictating where the money's supposed to come from while the universe is pouring it in from another direction. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a very important point because, you know, we talk about living your passion and some of us are fortunate enough to do for a living the thing that we love. But just because you don't make money of, out of it doesn't negate the, the value of something that you love. If, if what you love to do is spend time with your grandchildren and you need to work a, a part-time job so that you can spend the rest of your day with those kids, one accommodates the other. If They don't negate one another, correct? Right. Right. And if you don't have enough stamina to continue your passion without money coming to it, it won't have any stamina anyway. That's true. No. That's true. So how would you, uh, what advice would you give for someone who, who has a passion and they're not sure how to, how to even approach it? Well, you live your passion now as a writer. What steps did you take to get here and what advice would you give to other people? Just stick at it and stick at it and stick at it and stick at it and do it because of the immense pleasure that it brings to you. Because anything that brings a lot of love to you is eventually going to bring a lot of love to other people too. So just don't be hard on yourself. If something is exciting to you, it's worth your time and attention. Oh, I love that. I just love that. I love that. So um, tell me how this, how would you explain how this book works? Because I think it would make more sense coming from you than from me. It's broken up into different sections that address specific issues. Why did you decide to structure the book in this way? I have to be honest and say that I just started asking the questions that I've had all my life, and I'm assuming that everybody else has. We're all here together, learning together with the same issues. We live them with a different picture. Emotionally, they all feel the same. So I started asking the questions that I have, you know, what happens if I sit around and do nothing? What happens if I do what I love but the money doesn't come, which is what we've been talking about? What happens if I don't love the choices of those I love, which we all face? Uh, what happens if I think God favors another over me? All those questions that we have. And so the book is really a... Um a strategy book almost if you have a question you go to this section and it gives you spiritually inspired um, ways to address a certain issue correct yes and it's um, they ask the questions that we usually have that we give ourselves a negative answer to usually you know what happens if I criticize well you know I'm gonna be everybody's gonna criticize me well that's fact that is what happens you know you Draw back criticism to yourself. But it comes from a very positive slant. Uh, it's like a shift in thinking. Yeah. This is, um, uh, this is uh, something for you to learn about yourself. If you get criticized somebody else, you open your heart and your aura to feeling the criticism that other people have of you. If you get criticized and you haven't been criticizing anybody else, You'll just notice to think, oh, well, that person has a problem, my problem. If you feel that gut in your heart, you know, that, that feeling like that impact of somebody's been, uh, said something mean to you, you need to ask yourself, where have I made someone else uncomfortable in the same way? And this is, this is the theme with most of the books that you write, that the whole world is pretty much a mirror of you. Isn't it? Yes, yes. It is. It's a reflection. Everything in the illusion is a reflection. Yeah. And that's why the subtitle, How to Make Action Reaction Work for You Instead of Against You. I love it. You ask yourself, this is this is this is my uh, aha moment when I realize that the universe thinks everything is love. So as I'm patronizing to another person the universe says, oh, Betsy thinks that patron is, patron is love. So let's give her a lot more of that back. <laughs> oh, my goodness. So, so you, you really did touch on it. The, the, I created the What's Your Avocado concept that says that everybody, everyone has something about them that's special. And we call that unique element your avocado. The key yeah. is to find your avocado and act on it. And, 
And so every week I ask my guests, what was your avocado moment? What was the moment when you knew what you were here to do and how you were going to do it? It was the moment that I heard the message from Spirit when I sat down and said that I wanted to honor the gift. And I heard that um, we are all the beautiful love of God and that everything that I was going to do to show that God or share that God with others would be supported. And so that was really the moment. And it was my avocado because the fruit has been so sweet <laughs> from, uh, from that moment on. You know, my whole life turned around and everything changed. I love it. Betsy. Betsy, thank you. Bet my guest today has been Betsy Otter Thompson. Her book is The What Happens If I Book. It's wonderful. Betsy, tell our audience how to get your book. Well, they can go to Amazon and put in books by Betsy Otter Thompson, or they can go to my website at www.betsythompson.com. Wonderful. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. My pleasure. I'm Stacey Zinn Roberts, and this has been Live Your Passion. Bye.